Well, ho, 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 everybody. Welcome to another day of uh, movies. Christmas movies. Twelve days of Christmas movies. Oh, and here we are again, talking about Christmas movies. Who would have thunk it? Who could have seen it coming? Who could have seen it coming since yesterday? Oh, my God. So, anyways, we're going to be talking about uh, the recently released, maybe, maybe new Christmas classic. I don't know. I guess we're going to talk. We're going to find out. The Christmas Chronicles from 2018. The film was directed by Clay Cadis. It's, uh... Written by Matt Lieberman from a story by David Guggenheim and Matt Lieberman. It uh, stars Oliver Hudson, Kimberly Williams Paisley, Judah Lewis, Darby Camp, Kurt Russell, and others. The logline plot synopsis is the story of a sister and brother, Kate and Teddy Pierce, whose Christmas Eve plans to catch Santa Claus on camera turns into an unexpected journey that most kids could only dream about oh yeah the christmas chronicles everybody you remember you remember when the uh this i remember when this got like launched netflix does this thing where they don't really tell you very far in advance when something is coming out it's like a two-week window and they drop a trailer uh but i remember being just kind of intrigued <clears throat> not because i particularly care about christmas movies per se but i really like kurt russell i'm not gonna lie big Kurt Russell fan. So anything Kurt Russell's in, I'll probably give a chance to. <laughs> and especially if it looks like Kurt Russell doing something where he's having fun, then I definitely want to go check that out. And uh, Christmas Chronicles definitely looked like that. And I'm happy to report that overall, I think the Christmas Chronicles is pretty decent. It's a pretty decent Christmas movie. It's actually got like a really great uh, theme really great subtext to the movie and it's a fun adventure movie it's kind of like a cross between adventures and babysitting the movie from the 80s with elizabeth shoe and um what the santa claus 2 you know the one with tim allen not the first one but santa claus 2 spe specifically santa claus 2 because it's just a little bit more heightened and silly and the Santa Claus, you go back and watch that Tim Allen Santa Claus. I don't know if we're going to get around to watching it this year, but kind of a depressing movie. I've never been a huge fan of the Santa Claus. I've always thought it was kind of like, eh, whatever. It's just like too, too bland. I don't know. Something about it I don't like. Anyways, maybe we'll revisit it. Maybe it'd be interesting to talk about. But this movie, I think they do a pretty good job um, overall. It does. It feels it's very Christmassy. It's got all the right elements. It's got all about the like kind of the message of Christmas. It's played throughout the entire movie. It was pretty successful. But the thing that I really liked the most about the movie is that it deals with the concept of uh, kids without their father and uh, the idea that that's a, a really a negative force in their life, uh, especially for the son. Uh, you know, it's sending him down on a bad path because he just doesn't have that guidance, you know? And I was really kind of almost taken aback that that was like a loud and current year in modern times to be a theme that's prevalent. And it's kind of a really nice, got a really nice little arc to it where Santa Claus uh, tries to help this kid find his way. And instead of becoming his father, like a paternal presence per se, I mean, because old St. Nick, he's everyone's paternal presence. But for that kid specifically, it's to remind him of the legacy of his father and all of the good things that his father taught him to kind of find this inner strength. There's a really great moment at towards the end of the movie where they're in the sleigh and they're <clears throat> going almost going to go head on with a train. And the kid's got to pull up on the reins of the reindeer. And he doesn't know if he can do it. And Santa Claus kind of inspires him by invoking the name of his father. Uh, and... And reminding him like what strength that his father may have like left with him i thought it was a really great 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 message for a movie uh especially in the modern era and the fact that that is a controversial almost position to have is kind of ridiculous but it, it is uh because people feel threatened and people feel defensive about the idea that if you even suggest that like a, a father in a kid's life is an important thing and I love that the movie acknowledged that. 
Um, and then the way the movie ends by kind of bringing his memory back, but not like, you know, like it just, it's okay to have to feel bad and it's okay to miss someone. Uh, and it's also okay to celebrate them, you know, celebrate their, their presence in their, in your life. Cause you know, the story I, I've skipped way far ahead, but, uh, <laughs> story concerns like you know a brother and sister and they lost their father and their father was kind of really into christmas and um and since he's passed away they've had kind of a hard time the, the whole family uh but let's just talk about some more of the stuff uh kurt russell as santa claus which is what i was really anticipating right uh he's awesome probably one of my favorite modern santa clauses if not the best i've seen in a long time like He's doing his Kurt Russell thing, but he, for some reason, just is really able to capture kind of the spirit of Santa Claus. There's a great sequence that takes place in a restaurant and Santa Claus needs a ride and he goes in and he's trying to like talk to all the people in the restaurant, trying to convince them that he's Santa Claus and remind them of the, the spirit of the time of year. And, uh, and everybody's like, oh, you fucking psycho. So it's got a little bit of that like fish out of water kind of vibe to it with Santa Claus. But, uh, like, Russell totally sells it, and he's obviously having a blast in the role of Santa Claus. And it's infectious. Like, you can't help but kind of have a good time with him. Uh, so I really love that. Um, even everybody is pretty good, though. Like, the kids are really good. If I do have a, a small minor complaint is that I do think it was a little bit long. I think you could probably cut a hot ten minutes out of this movie. It kind of drags in the middle like it has a purpose in the sense that like they have to have like these kids kind of go through their own trials juxtaposed to being with santa claus uh to show them like how important kind of the spirit of the time of year is and what it can actually do for their lives so i get why it's there because that's really what the middle is mostly comprised of because uh, santa claus kind of gets sidelined for a little while but but even having said that i I have I had a really great time. Um, it's something that will definitely be in my Christmas rotation, 100%. Um, it's a modern classic. I'd put it up there with like, in terms of modern Christmas movies, like Elf, which I'm not like a huge Elf fan, but I do think out of all like the modern Christmas movies, it's very few of them that ever feel like they have that like kind of the sense of a classic where you kind of just immediately recognize like, Oh wow, this is a really great Christmas movie. This will be remembered for a hundred years. Um, I don't know if Christmas Chronicles quite gets there, but it's pretty damn close. And I'd put it, um, I put it up against like something like elf. Honestly, it's less overtly silly, but, um, I think elf is actually a lot better than maybe people give it credit for in the sense that uh, people just kind of assume that it's like a good Christmas movie but if you actually go watch the movie and you were to take it apart it's actually very fascinating and it's I think it's pretty well made John Favreau yeah he can cook he can make movies all right so that's the first one I always want to talk a little bit about the Christmas Chronicles 2 because I did I had a I had a double feature uh, me and the fam hung out, had a double feature. We kind of had, I'd seen Christmas Chronicles when it came out. So I was already kind of familiar with that one, but I never watched Christmas Chronicles too, because it just came out this year. So we're like, Hey, let's just keep rolling. Let's keep watching Christmas movies. So that Christmas Chronicles two came out this year. This time is directed by Chris Columbus. You know who old Chris Columbus is, don't you? He directed, um, well, most famously. <clears throat> Home Alone, Home Alone 2, this is Doubtfire, Bicentennial, man, wow, I didn't know he directed that. Adventures in Babysitting, I invoked the name earlier, he directed that. Um, yeah, a couple, couple Harry Potter movies, Percy Jackson, which I've never seen, Pixels, everybody's favorite movie. Uh, but yeah, so old Chris Columbus, he takes over directorial duties for this one. Written by uh, Matt Lieberman and Chris Columbus. It stars Kurt Russell, Goldie Hawn, Darby Camp, Julian Dennison, the old Kiwi, young Kiwi actor, uh, who kind of 
kind of came to be was the call of the wilder people i think um uh yazer bruno darling love tyrese gibson and others the plot synopsis is kate pierce now a cynical teen is unexpectedly reunited with santa claus when a mysterious troublemaker threatens to cancel christmas forever so this one is interesting because it kind of follows the trajectory of those tim allen the santa claus movies where it, it totally goes off into completely fantastical territory and it feels much more overtly like a kid's movie. Where the first movie I would say is like, okay, that's like a family film. That's something everybody can kind of get around and watch and enjoy on some level. This one felt way, 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 way more tailored specifically for kids. Um, I think it's, maybe it's Chris Columbus, I don't know. I don't know, but uh, there was something about it. I thought it felt pretty short of uh, the first one. It's got a completely different tone and vibe. And it's interesting because it, it essentially is dealing with the same subject matter. It deals with the same thematic elements, uh, except for this time, the older brother's really not there. And they kind of have a stand in. They have like this guy who used to be this elf and he kind of went evil and he's looking for revenge on Santa Claus, which is the, uh, the kid from New Zealand. And he, you know, it's this idea that he's like kind of this uh, disaffected youth and uh he feels slighted by his father santa claus so he's kind of the the troubled one taking place of the older brother and then the girl the young girl who's now a teenager is a little bit more uh just she's just cynical she doesn't like christmas anymore although like if you had had that experience from the christmas chronicles the first one you think you'd kind of be into the season forever that would be it it would kind of seal the deal but I digress. These fucking kids, you know? These fucking teenage kids. Bastards. Yeah, so uh, I did not like this one as much. In fact, I had a hard time kind of just even really wanting to sit there and watch it. That's why I'm kind of just tacking it on at the end here. I just was... I didn't really enjoy it that much. Um, I really... Oh, you know, Kurt Russell, obviously. He's coming... He's back and he delivers. Kurt Russell fucking rocks, guys. Kurt Russell fucking rocks another great Santa Claus. And I just love that he just balances it perfectly. There's kind of this kind of sardonic kind of funny wit side to him, but he also has this great warmth about him where you, you kind of just buy it because Kurt Russell is that kind of guy. He is kind of playing just a variation on himself. It seems like, and, uh, and he's awesome and he knows how to modulate himself for these kinds of high concept kind of fantasy action movies he's just really good at it uh going all the way back to you know think about something like uh, big trouble in little china you know he's always just had a knack for this kind of thing and uh and i'm glad that he has the character i hope that he plays the character for at least one more time give us a trilogy and maybe rein in it a little bit give us something give us a new story maybe some new kids you know because the kids really aren't the draw like, I kind of wish that they had just gone with another family, another set of circumstances. Like, kind of coming back to the well a little bit too much with this one. Or maybe skip forward in time and they have their own kids and something happens. I don't know. See, now I'm like... <laughs> I wish they had made this movie instead of the one they made. Uh, actually, this one also is way too long. Way too long. Because this one's much more, like I said, overtly children-esque and of a film and uh, there's a lot of cgi like the elves play a pretty big role and they're they're kind of like cast as like almost like minions or something little christmas chronicle m mascots you're supposed to be like oh look at these adorable elves look at all this mischief they get up to aren't they so silly a bunch of bullshit bunch of bullshit if you ask me all right everybody thank you for so much for watching thank you for listening if you'd like to know more about zoo box there's a bunch of links in the description for facebook for instagram for my twitter for dan twitter also if you'd like to make a suggestion for one of these semi-daily movie reviews or something for zoo box goes to the movies or a topic to be discussed on one of our various live shows or zoo box prime uh leave it in the comments and uh let me know if you liked christmas chronicles what do you think of kurt russell as Santa Claus, do you buy him? Do you love him as much as I do? Do you not like him? If you don't like him, please let me know. I love to, uh, 
I'd love to hear a, a counter opinion to that. And, uh, you know, and who knows? Who knows? Maybe we'll read it on live on air someday. All right, everybody. You have the best one ever. Goodbye.